So good evening all. I would firstly like to thank the organizers for this opportunity. And after that exciting talk by Dr. Aditya, now as with any drug, we are going to start looking at osumatinib in the adjuvant setting. We know that uh, one in three patients with NCS, uh, NSCLC present with resectable disease, but in our country, that's even lesser. And lung cancer, as we know, is the leading cause of cancer death. It accounts for more than 1.7 million deaths annually and as many deaths as breast, prostate and colorectal cancers combined. Now, that's quite a lot. And NSCLC represents 85% of all lung cancer cases with an estimated 30% of patients presented with resectable disease at diagnosis and which is much, much lesser in our country. And can you, can I go, can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah, and we know the outcomes after surgical resection and adjuvant chemotherapy vary quite a bit from stage 1B to stage 3. With stage 1, a five-year recurrence rate of 45% is seen. So even a stage 1 pans, uh, a patient who has undergone complete resection followed by adjuvant chemotherapy, which is the standard of care, one in two patients do have a recurrence. When we go to stage 3, it becomes almost 75% of the patients do have a recurrence. Next slide, please. So based on a limited number of studies, we know that the EGFR mutations differ between Caucasians and Asians. In Asian population, so from stage one to stage four, the prevalence of uh, EGFR varies from 34% to 54 in stage one, to 24 to 47 in stage two, 27 to 47 in stage three, and 33 to 48% in stage four. This is in the Asian population. And if EGFR TKIs were available in the resectable setting, a similar proportion of patients may be able to benefit compared to the advanced setting, as we have seen just now, that it is without doubt one of the drugs to watch out for. So osimertinib as adjuvant therapy in patients with stage 1B and 3A EGFR mutate, mutation positive NSCLC after complete tumor resection was evaluated by the ADORA trial. So it was a double-blinded phase three international randomized control study where both Asians and Caucasians were included. And the inclusion criteria consisted of patients above 18 years for the Caucasian and for Japanese and Taiwanese, it was more than 20, PS of zero to one and confirmed, confirmed primary non-squamous NSCLC with an exon 19 deletion or L8, L85R, brain imaging, if not uh, completed preoperatively, and they had to undergo a complete resection with negative margins. And the maximum interval between surgery and randomization was 10 weeks without adjuvant chemotherapy and 26 weeks with adjuvant chemotherapy. And they were stratified as per age, EGFR mutation status, and race. They received osumatinib ATMG once daily or a placebo once daily. And the treatment was for three years. The primary endpoint was DFS by investigator assessment in stage 2 to 3A designed for superiority under the assumed DFS hazard ratio of 0 0.7. So it was, they were looking to find out the superiority. And secondary was DFS in the overall population, that is including stage 1B. So, and DFS at two, three, four, and five years, and overall survival, safety, health-related, and quality of life parameters. But what has happened is, following International Drug Monitoring Committee's recommendation, the study was unblinded early due to an unprecedented uh, uh, discovery of efficacy. And here they have reported an unplanned interim analysis. So at the time of unblinding, the study had completed enrollment of all patients and were, most of the patients were followed up to a duration of one year. So this was an unplanned interim analysis. So as we have just gone through the inclusion criteria, I'm just going to quickly go, uh, skip through this. And one thing that we need to notice here is for patients who have had only segmentectomies or wedge resections, they were excluded. Next slide, please. So as we can see between the experimental and the control arm, both the groups are very well matched, including uh, the, the stage at uh, diagnosis. There were 32, 34, and 35% of them were in stage 1B, 2, and 3, like in the placebo group. And even the exon 19 deletion or the L85R were well balanced among both the groups. And even the people who received adjuvant chemotherapy, yes or no, were well balanced. One thing to know that 25 to 30 percent of the patients in stage 1B had received uh, adjuvant chemotherapy, but almost 75 percent of the people in stage 3 here had received adjuvant chemotherapy. And these 
Kaplan Mayer curves are something which are a wonder for all of us to see. There's very early separation of curves. And what they found was in the probability of disease-free survival after a follow-up of almost close to a year, osimertinib definitely decreased the disease uh, recurrence with a hazard ratio of 0.17. That translates to an 83% decrease in recurrence in the study primary population and in the overall population. The primary population, as we know, was uh, 1, 2, and 3A. That was the primary objective. In the overall population, it decreased the risk of recurrence by almost 80%. So this is something which is much better than what we just saw in the metastatic setting. Next slide, please. So as I just said, yeah. So the DFS, two-year DFS was consistent with the osimertinib across all disease stages. So stage 1B had obviously the lesser hazard ratio for uh, at 0.39. Stage 2, the hazard ratio was 0.17 and 3A, it was 0.12. So in stage 3, a person had an 88% decrease in recurrence. Next slide, please. So here again, if you see the forest plot here, almost all the subgroups benefited from adjuvant osimertinib. One thing that I would like to point out here is uh, non-Asians and Asians, non-Asians definitely did a little better compared to uh, the Asians. And uh, again, stage 1B, as we expect, definitely had a higher hazard ratio of 0.39. And whether they took adjuvant chemotherapy or not, it wasn't... Uh, much different and people who took adjuvant chemotherapy definitely did better and people with exon 21 that is l85r definitely did slightly worse than people with exon 19 deletion next slide please so this was an early snapshot of overall survival which is too early the data is not mature the study completed enrollment in 2019 and uh, just post uh, one year, it was an unplanned interim analysis. But just going by the trends with such unprecedented DFS benefit, we can expect an overall survival benefit, but I would not comment too much on it at this moment. Next slide, please. So what about the other TKIs? Have they been evaluated in the adjuvant setting? Yes, there was the select study which evaluated uh, adjuvant adlotinib after adjuvant chemotherapy. It did show a consistent two-year DFS benefit. And then there was the radiant study, which was again with erlotinib versus placebo after adjuvant chemotherapy. It did show a meaningful DFS benefit. Even the even study again with erlotinib did show a benefit in the DFS. But one thing to note here is this is just telling us adjuvant EGFR inhibitors definitely have a role to play in patients with uh, completely resected stage 1B to 3A lung cancers. And the even the Jeftinib study, which was done in China, showed a definite DFS benefit, but here there was not a significant overall survival improvement. We all know that people with a driver mutation, especially EGFR, tend to do worse than people um, who do not have an EGFR mutation if they're not in stage four, that is stage one to stage three I'm talking about. Next slide, please. So what about the CNS meds? Adara definitely shows that people with... Uh, who received adjuvant osimertinib definitely had a much, much lower uh, disease recurrence in the CNS. So that is, we already know osimertinib definitely has higher CNS penetration compared to the other PKIs. So the CNS is a common site of distant recurrence among patients with EGFR mutation and SCLC receiving EGFR TKIs. In the adjuvant radiant study, 37% of recurrences in patients with uh, EGFR mutant and SCLC treated with arlotinib had CNS involvement. And uh, osimertinib, as we know, has much higher significant exposure in the brain compared with other EGFR TKIs. In the advanced setting, first-line osimertinib demonstrated superior overall survival and a 52% reduction in the risk of CNS pro progression compared with alertinib and jeftinib. So here, what, we, what they uh, saw in the trial was very surprising. People who were treated with adjuvant osimertinib definitely had lower recurrences and most of the recurrences in people with adjuvant osimertinib were local recurrences and very little distant recurrences compared to placebo where the distant recurrences were more common. So local recurrences, much easier to manage. So that was one more thing that they noticed in the Adora study. Next slide, please. So again, as we just spoke about, the sites of recurrences uh, in the distant recurrences subgroup, definitely the number of CNS recurrences were much, much lesser when adjuvant osimertinib was used. Next slide, please. 
and the CNS BFS. So overall, 45 patients had CNS BFS events in the Odora study, and the CNS recurrence rate was one uh, percent compared to 10 percent in the placebo group. And here we can see that the risk of CNS progression was reduced by around 82 percent. So adjuvant osimertinib decreased the rate of CNS recurrence by 82 percent. Next slide, please. So the safety summary, which is again important in any trial, we can see here with osimertinib, most of us have been using it for a while now. Compared to other EGFR TKIs, osimertinib is well tolerated, with major side effects being in the skin and diarrhea. Next slide, please. Yeah. So most of the patients had diarrhea or skin uh, issues with paranoia, dry skin, puritis, and cough, and with very little grade three toxicities, causing treatment discontinuation. Next slide, please. One one thing that they noticed was some of the patients had interstitial lung disease and some of them had QT prolongation. These two should be kept in mind while using osimertinib, especially in the adjuvant setting. Next slide, please. So, adju uh, people uh, in the Adora study, as I had said before, almost seventy percent of them had received previous chemotherapy in the stage three. So, next slide, please. So the DFS in patients with and without adjuvant chemotherapy in the overall population, we can see here is with adjuvant chemotherapy, the hazard ratio was 0.16, which is very very significant. And without adjuvant chemotherapy, also the hazard ratio was 0.23. So we are here talking about whether you receive chemotherapy or not in the adjuvant setting after a complete resection. Adjuvant osimertinib provides almost 82, 83 percent benefit in reducing the risk of any recurrence. Again, the same uh, forest plot here. People with and without adjuvant chemotherapy, we have established without a doubt that a clinically meaningful DFS benefit with osimertinib was observed in patients with or without adjuvant chemotherapy. Next slide, please. Yeah, especially in stage one B, as we can, as we know, the the meaningful benefit with adjuvant uh, osimertinib was slightly less than compared to stage two and stage three. So in stage uh, 1B, the hazard ratio was uh, okay. It wasn't uh, it wasn't available here. And with people who receive without adjuvant chemotherapy, it was 0.38. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is a, just a repetition of without without chemotherapy. There is a clinically meaningful benefit. Next slide, please. Yeah. So my coming apologies, the, sir. You are left with just two minutes to conclude yeah, the presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So coming to the most important part of any of the recent trials, that is patient-related outcomes. Next slide, please. So Adora patients in Adora were given the SF thirty six uh, were uh, SF thirty six had a quality of uh, life health survey was done, which had two components, mainly the physical component summary and the mental component summary, with eight health domains, and we can see most of the patients. Well, almost more than 85% of the patients, both in the osimertinib and the placebo arm, were compliant with this quality of life study. Next slide, please. And what we can see by these uh, two graphs here is both the physical and the mental components were similar between the placebo and the control arm. Next slide, please. So just to summarize the order, adjuvant osimertinib is the first targeted agent in the global trial. To show a statistically significant and clinically meaningful improvement in DFS in stage one B to three A, there was an eighty percent reduction in the risk of disease recurrence or death with osimertinib, and the DFS at two years was eighty nine percent versus fifty two percent respectively, and it demonstrated a clinically meaningful improvement in CNS DFS, which is very important, and the safety profile and the quality of life issues with the both the arms were very similar. Next slide, please. Yeah. So now, just to summarize in one sentence, there is going to be a rampant use of adjuvant osimertinib in the near future, but we still need to wait for the overall survival data. This is an unplanned interim analysis which has shown these results. So let's keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best. Thank you.